The Galapagos Islands are off the coast of Ecuador. The Galapagos are made up of 13 major islands. They are close along the equator in the eastern Pacific Ocean, 600 miles west of Ecuador. The islands are spread out over 23,000 square miles. Hi, did you know the Galapagos was formed by volcanoes? The Galapagos hotspot is responsible for the creation of the islands. The hotspot is a crack in the Earth's crust where lava flows out. The currents cutting from North and South America meet at the equator and go west towards the Galapagos. Water currents and air patterns brought in plants and animals to the islands. They also bring cold, nutrient-rich water. There are two seasons in the Galapagos, the wet season and the dry season. The dry season is called the gar season. The Galapagos has some of the most interesting and unique plants. This is a red mangrove. It is the most common of all the mangroves. Only the roots touch the water. It lives in salt water. This is a common carpet weed. It has pink flowers. This turns red for the gara season. This is the lava cactus. It is the smallest cactus in the Galapagos. It grows on the lava rock. This is the first plant back after lava. The Galapagos Islands has many interesting landforms. We have shared the plant and land facts about the Galapagos. Did you know Galapagos means tortoise in Spanish? In 1535, the islands were found by a Spanish bishop with the name of Fray Thomas de Berlanga. He named the islands off their famous giant tortoises. Yep, these creatures are so special to their land that it was named after them. These species eat cacti, grasses, milkweed, and melons. Like us, they drink water too. These animals have adapted to the different islands depending on where they ended up. But here's the question. How does a group of 550 pound creatures travel from South America to the Galapagos? Well, scientists believe they travel on rafts made of various materials, including branches and logs. Some tortoise shells have a saddleback where the part of the shell near the head goes up so they can eat plants above their heads. Others don't because the food they need is on or near the ground. Did you know that the temperature affects tortoise genders? When it's cooler, it's more likely for majority to be male. When it's warmer, majority will be female. In the past, humans have been threatening Galapagos tortoises for centuries by bringing foreign feral dogs and goats to the islands. In fact, they almost went extinct. Now there's a Galapagos tortoise breeding center on Santa Cruz Island. So they hatch them, then release them, the baby tortoises back onto the island where they were originally from. Thanks to the help of humans and technology, these creatures will continue to thrive. The Galapagos birds have a big impact on these islands. This is the blue-footed booby, the clown of the bird group. The blue-footed booby gets its name from the Spanish word clown. When the blue-footed booby attracts a mate, the male does a funny dance and the female copies him if she's interested. The blue-footed booby is facing a big problem. Lots of females are not attracted to some or most males because they are less healthy than others. Yes, the bluer the feet, the healthier. The blueness of their feet comes from what they eat and what nutrition are in the food. I think we can help by keeping the ocean cleaner so that their food stays healthier. I agree. Did you know there's also another booby? Its name is the red-footed booby. The red-footed booby and the blue-footed booby look very similar, but they have lots of differences. The red-footed booby is the only booby that clings onto tree branches. Its feet cling onto tree branches so they can nest in trees. This is one of the red-footed boobies' favorite food, flying fish. This is a flying fish wing or fin. This might look like an ordinary bird, but it's far from it. The male frigate bird inflates its chest pouch to attract female frigate birds. The frigate bird flaps its wings and makes noise when the female flies by. The frigates have a very interesting way of getting their food. Because they can't go on water, they peck at other birds' heads until they barf up or give up their food. The Galapagos penguins are very interesting. They dive in the water to get fish. The penguin's favorite food is small fish, such as sardines. It's the closest penguin to the equator that you will find. The reason they can survive because of cold water currents. Remember not to litter. It can hurt all the Galapagos birds. 
Welcome to the Galapagos Islands, here with an ancient life cycle completely cut off from the rest of the world. Here and everywhere, except for the Atlantic Ocean, somewhere over there, lives a very captivating animal. The irresistible Galapagos Sea Lion. The Galapagos Sea Lions are very enthusiastic and love the water. They cruise the ocean at 11 miles per hour, but with a burst of speed, can go up to 25. Sea lions spend a lot of time playing and are generally very inquisitive. Their main source of food is fish. The Galapagos sea lion can usually be found lying on the beach enjoying the warm sun. A mother sea lion is called a cow and her baby is called a pup. Once the pup is born, it develops a unique hull that only the mother will recognize. The pup will play in the tide pools to learn about hunting and survival. Fur seals are smaller than Galapagos sea lions. The name is inaccurate because they are actually sea lions, not seals. Fur seals were almost hunted to extinction during the 20th century because of the very valuable fur. But they are now protected, very protected. A major threat to the Galapagos sea lion is El Nino and La Nina. These cycles of warmer cold water temperatures could affect the marine life. The Galapagos is truly an amazing place, but it might be different in the future. For now, the Galapagos sea lion and fur seal are doing well, but, but we, we must continue to help them. <laughs> the Galapagos has many amazing things. One of them is the iguanas, the marine and land iguana. The endemic iguana is unlike any other animal in the Galapagos. There's no other animal like it. The iguana is an amazing creature. Iguanas came to the Galapagos 15 to 20 million years ago on logs and trees over the ocean. This is their story. There are four different iguanas. Three of them are lands and one of them is marine, but the other two land iguanas are very rare. This is one of the more interesting species, the marine iguana. The marine iguanas are the only marine lizard. They adapted to the harsh marine environments. They evolved blunt noses for grazing on seaweed with flattened tails to assist them for swimming and powerful limbs with strong claws to help them grip onto rocks. They are very interesting when it comes to main season. They get blotches of red and coppery green color from eating a particular seaweed that blooms in the summer. Sadly, marine iguanas don't live very long, only five to 12 years. We all love marine iguanas, but did you know our everyday lifestyle is hurting them when we drive cars and use other machines to release pollutants into the environment, which is creating global warming. Global warming is warming the water, and the warm water is killing the algae, which the marine iguanas like to eat. If global warming continues, the iguanas will starve. Last but not least is the land iguana. In the early 1800s, whalers and settlers came to the Galapagos Islands. They most likely ate the land iguana. In daytime, they maintain their body temperature by basking in the sun. When they get hot, they find shade. At night, they sleep in burrows, which they dig themselves. The male land iguana defends territories with displays involving head bobbing, biting, and tail thrashing. The Galapagos is home of the iguana. The iguana is like no other animal in the Galapagos. It comes in many unique shapes, colors, and sizes. There used to be only 4,000 iguanas. There's 12,000 now. Charles Darwin would have been proud. This is the Galapagos. The wondrous Galapagos Islands and the amazing marine life thriving like never seen before in the underwater world. Here in the Galapagos, we have some magnificent creatures. One reason that sea life here is so spectacular is because of the cool water currents that bring wonderful aquatic life to the Galapagos, including the Galapagos green sea turtle. The extraordinary Galapagos green sea turtle. These turtles are not found in many other places other than the Galapagos. Adult green sea turtles eat seagrass and algae. They are mostly herbivorous, which means the plants. They find their food underwater and on the seafloor. Sadly, these are endangered species. Their main threat is people. Turtles get caught in boat motors and they are killed. People hunt them for their eggs and meat and people take over and destroy their habitat. People should stop hurting these turtles. And swimming along with these reptiles are some shocking fish. 
The Galapagos hogfish is a species of fish that is found all over the eastern Pacific Ocean and on the coast of South America, including the Galapagos Islands. It is not in severe danger, but is still threatened by fishermen and the aquarium trade, which is not good. Lots of fish are in danger in the Galapagos, including a delightful breed of pufferfish. Another fish in the Galapagos is the guinea fowl puffer. The guinea fowl puffer is also named the golden puffer. This puffer eats on tips of branching corals and sponges. This puffer lives in the Pacific Ocean to the Indian Ocean. Also, there is a marvelous and quirky fish in the Galapagos, the parrotfish. It can change its gender when the opposite gender dies. It can also change its color. There is sure a lot of fish in the Galapagos, but we also have other enchanting creatures. Stingrays are a type of ray and some of them live in the Galapagos. They eat sea worms, clams, and mollusks. Stingrays are not endangered in the Galapagos, but still the dreadful pollution can harm their kind. The beautiful sea, what a marvelous place to be here in the Galapagos, is such an unbelievable place. There is some remarkable marine life here in the Galapagos, some that we are even yet to discover. People should work hard to protect them. When one creature becomes extinct, it's hard for others to survive. I agree. Share this news with your friends. Help protect the Galapagos wildlife. Remember, every little bit helps. Thank <laughs> you.